Yeah, well, it's fun to be able to take the web show on the road, or literally through the air, from Sydney over to LA. I flew via China, so it's always fun being on the plane for 20 hours. Not, but it's always fun to be in LA and catch up with some cool people, including publicist Siri Garba. Alrighty, here in, uh, well, we're in Hollywood, right? Yes, we are. Hollywood Hills. <laughs> Hollywood Hills. <laughs> Siri Garber, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Um, I love stories, so I'm wondering how you got into the business, because I kind of found your thing on the, I think it's IMD Pro, whatever it is. IMDb Pro? Yep. Uh, yes. Um, it's a really long story. I don't think we'd have time to tell it. Really? Yes. Uh, how do I abbreviate? Um, are you from here, originally? I'm from here. Okay. I wasn't born here, but I've lived here since I was two months old. So that's pretty yeah, local. Yeah, that's a while. Yep. Pretty local, mm -hmm. sadly. You know, everyone that's from L.A. is <laughs> in the head. <laughs> Supposedly, that's what I hear. <laughs> um, okay, what can I think of to make this story short? Because it's just ridiculously long. Um, it can be long if it's good. I'm sure it's a good one if it's around here. It, it's, not, it's not all that interesting. Yeah. I basically... Uh, when I graduated from college, I was working at a political think tank for a very strange man who was very right-wing Republican, and I wasn't. So he kind of brought me in to sort of be the uh, sort of liberal, sort of median, middle-of-the-road person in the organization. And he started these groups that were supposed to educate celebrities and people within sort of... I guess the political world about issues that affected Hollywood but that were also political. So different types of, you know, um, w whether it was from like, oh God, what were we working on at the time? It was the, now I forget what it was called, the box that they were going to put on the TVs so that you could regulate what your kids watched. Uh, I forget okay. what it was called now. Yep. Things like that. And uh, so I did that for about two years and I was sort of the PR director there and then I decided that the political world was crazy and boring and just didn't really interest me. It was too conservative. Um, I was told I had to wear stockings. Really? And, you know, I was like, unless I'm 50 and, you know, the veins on my legs are bulging out or something, I don't, I don't really need that yet. Right. So I left there and I interviewed at about four of the largest PR firms that existed in LA mm -hmm. and they were a little stuffy to me. They all kind of looked the same. Their press kits looked the same. The publicists looked the same. And it just didn't really feel like a world that I would fit into. And I had sort of my own ideas in my head of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. So I took money I had saved in college and just opened my doors. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Having no idea what I was doing. So what was it like? I mean, when you first got going, it was just bizarre. It, yeah. I mean, it was... I rented offices that I couldn't afford... Uh, which was cool, smart move, um, in Century City, in a high rise in Century City, which was really bizarre because I was trying to escape the corporate thing and I was getting on elevators every day with lawyers and accountants, you know, in their suits with their briefcases who would kind of look at me like, where did you come from? Um, I have tattoos, so, you know, when you're in a corporate building, they think that's a little weird. They think I'm a stripper or something. Right, okay. But, um, and, uh, I just kind of started calling some of the actors that I had worked with on projects that I had done at the political think tank. We had done events and a celebrity golf tournament, and there were some that I knew uh, didn't have publicists, so I kind of went after them as my first ones and got my first four or five clients who were crazy enough to decide to let me represent them. And it just kind of went from there, wound up moving out of that office to an office on Robertson, moved from there into my old house, and then moved to my office now, which is, I now own this house, so I've really moved up in the world. I'm not renting wow. anymore. Woohoo! That's awesome. And just down the hill from I the Hollywood the sign world. up there? Yes, I, I live under the Hollywood sign. Yep. So I get to hang out with the tourists every day who take pictures in the middle of the street who I'd like to run over. <laughs> right. But I don't, because I might get arrested. Um, but I actually came up with this idea that I could make a lot of money. I could put a sign outside and I could charge people like 10 bucks to go take pictures from the top of my stairs because it's a good view. Ah, okay. You know, yeah. I could get 10 people a day. You might get distracted though in your office with that's happening. Yeah, but it'd be kind of cool. Mm. You'd be like, ooh, what weird tourists are there. So I'm assuming that, that, you, that you love your job. I do. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes it's frustrating you know, uh, publicists sometimes we, we become sort of glorified babysitters, and some of the actors don't behave. But that's what I was wondering. Like, what would be a typical thing for you? Like, maybe not an extreme example where you know you're looking after someone who's misbehaving all the time. But what would be a typical thing for you with a relationship with the client? Like, how full on or hands on are you uh, in their life? Uh, well, very hands on with with the actors I represent. It, it's different for each person. But, you know, I do everything from booking their travel to sometimes hiring their assistants to working with their lawyers, their managers, their agents, uh, you know, getting them dressed for things, dates, you know. We, we for real? Dating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clients will say, I want you to set me up with so-and-so or, you know, I want to meet that guest model and I have to figure out how to make it happen. Um, you know, all of that, helping plan weddings, <laughs> birthday parties, you know, all it kind of runs the gamut probably more than I would you know want to do when we wind up doing that just because it kind of comes with the territory yeah. and a lot of our clients are, are young and new and don't have personal assistance so we kind of wind up taking on a lot of stuff that probably an assistant would do right. that we probably shouldn't but we're nice right so we do it anyway well I knew when I got a chance to talk to you that I was excited because I ask a lot of people about like their craziest adventure or their story and I know you can't sort of name names or whatever else but do you have a, a an adventure or story within your field that just cracks you up something that's happened or that you've been involved in with oh yeah lots <laughs> lots um wow some are kind of x-rated really uh, oh yeah this is on I, the net go for it no I was uh the, these aren't the x-ray, but I actually used to represent an actor who was in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I had the honor, because it was really amazing, to go on the press tour for about 10 days through Europe for Return of the King. Ah. We had the craziest things happen on that press. I've never, ever in my life seen such crazy fans, because you get all those sci-fi, Tolkien, you know, all the the really, really sort of over-emphatic fans, somehow they managed to figure out where we would go at all times. Well, even if we'd go to dinner, like you'd walk out and there'd be hundreds of people. But there, we were in Berlin. There was some kind of a strike going on, an actor's strike, what their version of the Screen Actors Guild is there, you know, in... in Germany, there was some weird stuff going on. So they found out that the cast was making an appearance at this gallery and they were going to speak and there was going to be a Q&A and they stormed the lobby of this building that we were in and they had, they put us in a green room and then they had to shuffle us all out and they shoved us into a stairwell and the cops came in, the riot police oh with God. their little... Uh, what are the little baton things called? I forget what they're called. <laughs> and, you know, full gear and flak jackets. And we were like, whoa. Oh and it was like, there was like a thunderstorm. It had taken us forever to get to this place. And we kind of got ushered into a stairwell and then ushered out to our cars and had to leave and go back to the hotel. And um, they had come in and started tearing paintings off the walls and crazy stuff. Um, one of the limos that we were in hit hit a child. <gasps> Luckily, he just kind of sprained his ankle, but the kid kind of ran into our car <laughs> while we were sitting. Love you!